Combining credit card data in Excel and updating it on a monthly basis can be challenging, especially if you're copying and pasting or using VLOOKUPs. So today I'm gonna walk you step-by-step step through the best way to combine data from multiple credit cards in Excel using Power Query. And at the end, I'll show you how easy it is to update these files on a monthly basis, so make sure you don't miss that. But before we get started, leave a comment and let me know how else can I help you in Excel. And while you're at it, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much, and let's get started right now. So the first step is to download the credit card data that you wanna import into Excel. So here I am in my American Express credit card, and you can go to statements and activity, custom date range, and I'm gonna just choose the month of January. And I'm sure your credit card provider works similarly. And then this magical download button right here, click that, I wanna download an Excel file, and I'm gonna click download. And there it is up there in my browser. Moving on to Chase, I use a Chase credit card as well. So when I click down here to more, and spending report, that's where you can find the export functionality. And to mirror what I just did on Amex, I'm gonna check January, same magical download button here. And Chase is gonna be in a CSV, which will work a little bit differently, and you'll see that in a couple of steps. Click on download, and that download as well. And so now I'm gonna jump on over to my Excel workbook. So to get started, I'm gonna click on data, get data from file, and then click on from folder. And so here's the folder where I added that Amex data. Start with Amex, so I'll click on that and click open. Now this shows you the contents of the folder. That looks good, but there's some additional steps we need to make before we import it. So I'm gonna click on transform data. And so there's a lot of columns here, but all I really need are content. So I'm gonna click on content and then press control, click on name, go up here to remove columns and remove other columns. We do need to add a new column. And to do that, I'm gonna click up here to add column, go to custom column, and I'm gonna call this new column name import, and I'm gonna enter a custom column formula, excel.workbook. There's the formula open parentheses, and double click on content to bring in that content, close parentheses, and click OK. To move forward, click on this drop down here, and you've got a couple options. All we want are is the data. So I'm gonna unselect and just select data and click OK. Back to this drop down up here, and these are the columns in that American Express data, and Excel's not properly recognizing them, but that's all right, let's click OK to move ahead. Here is that data from American Express, and as we clean this data, each step we take will be listed in this Applied Steps section of Power Query. So to start, there's a lot of columns here. I like the name column, so I'm gonna click on that. Press Control, I like this date column, click on that. Description, amount, scroll all the way over here, and category. Those are the only columns that I like. Go back to home, and I'm gonna remove the other columns. To start, you can see that there's, the, the headers really begin on row seven of our data. And there's six rows that we don't really care about. So I'm gonna click on remove rows, remove top rows, and remove the top six rows, click okay. That looks a lot better. And now this first row actually contains the headers that we wanna use. And this handy button here, use first row as headers is great. So click that. And now we've got our headers in place. The only header that I wanna change here is this. And I wanna call it type. And the headers are gonna be really important. You wanna use the same headers for your first credit card data as you do for your second credit card data. Now, similarly, there's 11 rows down here that we wanna get rid of. We don't wanna include in our analysis, so remove rows, remove bottom rows, and click 11 and click OK. A couple more edits here. There is a payment in our data, auto pay payment, thank you. And so I'm gonna click this drop down and unselect that to click OK. And I can see this ABC next to this date that Excel or Power Query is recognizing this as text. Well, 
it is a date, so I'm gonna click on that, select date, to make sure that it's properly formatted. Now, the last thing I'm gonna do is this type's gonna be important to know what files are included. I'm gonna right click, actually, go to replace values, and instead of activity 01, I'm just gonna call it Amex 01 2022, and click OK. This looks good, close and load. And Excel brings that into our workbook as a table. We're gonna do the same process again for Chase, but it's gonna be a little bit different. So data, get data from file, from folder. And this time we're gonna bring in that second credit card folder, click open. Again, we wanna transform this. And the big difference between this data and our American Express data is that we've got a CSV here. So again, we need this content and we need this name. We can remove all the other columns. This time when we add a new column, the custom column, we're still gonna call it import, but instead of Excel.workbook, we're gonna do csv.document, which works similarly, but for CSVs. Open parentheses, double click content, close parentheses, and click OK. Back up here to this dropdown. Again, Excel isn't properly recognizing the column headings, but that's all right. So click OK. As we said, the column headers are very important to be the same here. So we like this name. There's two dates here. I actually like the post date. We like the description. We like category and we like amount. Otherwise, we can get rid of them. So home, remove columns, remove other columns. We called this name, we called it type before, but I'm actually gonna hold on that. And first I'm gonna say, use first row as headers to populate these headers correctly. And now I'm gonna rename this as type. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Right click here, replace values. And instead of that long string of characters, I'm just gonna call it Chase 01 2022 and click OK. Date needs to be renamed, but Excel recognized this as a date properly, so we don't need to make any changes there. Another thing I wanna draw your attention to is the amount here is a negative amount. And so I'm gonna enter a formula to change that. So I'm gonna rename this to amount underscore, go up here to add column, add a custom column. The new column name will be amount, and it's just gonna be uh, the amount underscore times negative one to convert those values to a positive number. So I'm gonna click and drag that, looks good, and then delete this amount column. You'll notice there is a payment here, so I wanna hide that payment like we did with Amex. So description, uncheck automatic payment, and click OK. This looks good, so home, close, and load. So now we've got our trace data, we've got our Amex data, let's combine them. So data, get data, combine queries this time, and append. The first table is Chase, the second table is Amex. Click OK. And because we used the same headers, Excel has merged these two data sets really well. The only change I wanna make here is I wanna call this combined instead of what it automatically named it. And instead of closing and loading, we're gonna close and load this too. And we're gonna select a pivot table report so we can automatically import our appended query into a pivot table report. Click OK. And so I'm gonna drag type to column. You've got an Amex type and a Chase type here. Drag date to rows. You can see we got our great dates there and then amount to values. And now you've combined the data from two credit cards, but let's see how easy it is to update this file on a monthly basis moving forward. So I'm gonna jump back over to the folders that we were importing. And I've already downloaded the next month's data. So this is our Amex folder that we imported into Excel. And I'm gonna just drag in the February data into that folder. And then I'm gonna go back to our combined data set and click refresh. And now you see the February data and the February dates populated. But if you're still here, you're gonna enjoy this video. Where I use Power Query to import and clean public company financials. And I will see you next time.